Aloha and how you doing? Gordo the Tech's out here. Welcome to another thrilling and exciting episode of Hivashi Talk. In the house with me today is the uh, lost nomad of the world, <laughs> <laughs> the security guy. I'm going to the Texar, and this is Andrew, the security guy. Good to be back, brother. Nice to see you, man. It's terrific to have you here. We have a great guest today, too. We have Ryan Borneman. 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 I'll get it right. Get Borneman. Last name. Borneman. 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 I'll lock that puppy in there. Borneman. So he's Sorry. going to talk about the value of internships. So as a student, we'll see how how that works out. So grab yourself a libation, pull up a chair, and sit down and join us for another 28 minutes of thrills like you've never seen before. Hibachi talk, baby. <laughs> Hibachi talk. Anyway, um, you know, we do news, and I've been doing a lot of following on, on cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, and so I'll give my little update before we get into knowing about who you are. So anyway, um, I did a presentation last week at the uh, Harvard Club. Okay. Um, and apparently Think Tech was there, well they were, and they recorded it, so I don't know where, where it ended up, but I'll mm. have to ask Jay um, where that may have ended up. But anyway, so anyway, so one of the things I talked about about Bitcoin last time I was on the show was the fact that it's, it's, there's so much popularity with it now that it's lagging on getting the transactions processed. Oh, okay. And so there's been lots of debate about how to do this thing, and so this thing called SegWit2 um, looks like it's going to be, um, or it's going to be recognized as the way to speed up the transaction authentication process. And 80% of those that are in the Bitcoin cryptocurrency field are behind it. So I think mm -hmm. that's going to happen real soon. So the other thing is that the um, uh, the United States uh, government, FBI, has asked for a a uh, 21.6 million dollar budget and 80 new employees to to watch over things like counter groups including drug hackers virtual currencies and all of this so the FBI oh. is looking to get into this because and I've mentioned this before there's a lot of ponzi schemes out there there's a lot of people pretending to um, take pretending that they've got something and they're taking your money they're called ICOs initial coin offerings and so I see a lot of that happening out there and I tell everybody I'm not telling you to invest in this and I'm telling you if you decide you want to get into it it's your money be prepared to lose it but you better pay close attention to what's out there because mm. you just can't do it on a whim interesting yeah just it's interesting um, then the interesting that uh, Christine Lagarde he's the uh, uh, or she is the the uh, director of the International Monetary Fund okay she's that said came out and said touted distributed ledger that's the ledger that's used to mm -hmm. manage cryptocurrencies it's, as a defense against cyber terrorism so again the banks are going to be looking at the ledger mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies and how all this thing works and I told everybody before you're going to see this for real estate transactions not the money just tracking the real ledger, estate sure. deals Boxing. the ledger for um, student registrations, mm -hmm. you're going to see this is going to mm -hmm. be the new secure way of that we're going to be processing Yeah, everything that needs a receipt, right? Yeah, anything so that, that needs we, a receipt. You and I can agree there's been a, an authorized transaction and right. that we can track it with that letter. Or anything, just to, um, so an example is real estate. Mm -hmm. You do it. You buy a piece of property, right? You got to do a title search. Mm -hmm. Thirty percent of all title searches in the U.S. are errors. Have errors in them. Oh. Thirty percent. But if you move that to a ledger technology, the cryptocurrency type technology, that would essentially go away because they all have to be authenticated, and every transaction builds on mm -hmm. the next one, on the next one, on sure. the next one. So awesome. it's the new. It's to me, I'm calling it the new internet. That whole ledger is the whole new internet. Didn't it all originally start from being completely anonymous? Like you could get bitcoins and spend them, and it would Satoshi, be Satoshi. Yeah, yeah. The, the the mystery man, Satoshi. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you're exactly it. It's your generation, dude. Mm -hmm. Man, this is yeah, the stuff that you should be at. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anyway, let's let's get a little background on yourself. So you're a student at KCC. I am. So and um, how'd we're you gonna land there? So how'd you land oh, there? Yeah. Where'd you land it? And I, I've, I've been stationary for almost six years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you grow up here? Or where I did you not. Know? I'm actually from a small town in Illinois, in southern Illinois, so somewhat near St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Um, so when I first came out to Hawaii. I was visiting my older brother, and of course he showed me the, you know, the ultimate time in Hawaii. I loved it, and I said, you know what, I just want to come out and give it a shot and see if I like it. Ten years later, here I am. Um, so I decided to stay, and, and my main objective in the beginning was to start going to school. And in the beginning, I wanted to go to business school. That's my main thing. I want to have my own business, and that was my, my ambition, my goal. Um, and upon going to business school, I just found out I, I didn't, maybe that type of schooling wasn't my style. I just mm -hmm. didn't like the way they were teaching. It was, <laughs> you know, it was, it just didn't seem practical for me. So what I did is I kind of took some time off, tried to start a business with some friends of mine, my brother. Um, long story short, a couple of years go by, I ended up starting a tour company with about nine guys in Waikiki, which we still run today. Oh, awesome. And uh, then decided I wanted to go back to school to get that degree as a, you know, a just-in-case type thing. Right. Um, but actually, now that I'm back in, in the IT program, in the ISD, um, or 
ITS program. I get those two mixed up. Um, <laughs> I, I'm finding that it's I not on the exam. Really no way. Way. <laughs> yeah, I find out that I really enjoy it and actually think I, I want to do a full career in this and even have my my business still on the side, um, but really push forward because I have an internship with IST and it's been going great so far. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see where that goes and, and kind of excited to get started with it. So you're in um, one of your professors is David Stevens. Yes. So who runs the Cyber Underground on um, Fridays? Underworld? Underground? Tune in. Under Friday. Friday's yeah. at 10 o'clock. I always get it wrong. <laughs> one day I called it the cyber underwear. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so he's one of your professors. Right? Yes, yes. So, um, Fantastic um, professor. And he's got that show every Friday at? One. One. So, and you're the co-host on there. I am. It's Sometimes. our spin-off, like Cheers. Once That's right. Yeah, I saw that episode. <laughs> so, 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 so how, what, what? Are you, yeah, so how'd you freshman, how'd you junior, IT where, where are you at? So, then? believe it or not, as of right now, I'm 26. Okay. I still am pursuing, or pursuing my associates. So, okay. after this next semester, I'll have my associates. Okay. Um, and then with a few certificates, yeah. Network Plus, Security Plus. Yeah. Um, so, kids, it's never too late. Keep in school. Well, tell, tell me, <laughs> I, I was 45 when yeah. I went to school. I never went to university until I was 45. Yeah, everyone's got their own pace. and uh, <laughs> I, 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 That's forgiving. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's own pace. I know, it's find more school that would let me in. It's nice. Anyway, so 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 oh, that's terrific. So how's the program there? Yeah. Uh, so it's actually, from my understanding, it's somewhat new to KCC. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I believe they started only in the past two to three years, and they really started amping up this IT like cybersecurity program right. at KCC uh, because, of course, HCC's had it for a while now. Right. And they are really focused on the that's cybersecurity that's side, program. and they're doing great at it. Um, so I think this is kind of. Um, KCC's way of combating that and, and starting to get serious about it because they've seen the market, they've seen how many jobs are coming up, how much companies actually need with all these recent breaches, which I'm sure Dave talks about a lot in the shows. Right. Um, so I, I think it's becoming a lot more important. And I think kids my age and, and even younger are really starting to realize how important it is to kind of maybe take that route if that's something you're interested in. So are, are internships a key component? I like to call these a, internship always, I'm not like, I like apprenticeship. Yeah. You know, remember like carpenters had mm -hmm. apprenticeships. Sure. Yeah, you know, I'd like to call these like this is an apprenticeship. You're learning how to do things Absolutely. from the experts in a particular field that you're you're Absolutely. you're studying. So is is this a an integral part of what KCC or is it is it up to you to go and find those opportunities? Um, it is a requirement for at least my pro, for my program that I'm in to have a semester of an internship. Okay. Um, it's a class. Yeah, it's a class. So he has to do so many hours of work in okay. the field. Yeah, yeah. The nice thing is they actually do provide a you know a group of, of possible companies to intern with. Okay. Um, the way I found out about IST is through Dave Stevens. Okay. Um, he recommended to me he. You know, because basically what I said I want to do is more of the sales side and, and kind of push on that tech route right. uh, rather than just be more of the programming side. And so he put me in touch with um, Andrew and Christine Lanyon, and I, it's honestly it's been great so far. So yeah, I'm excited about it. Pretty fun. Company. But um, I guess you could go out and find your own internships if you were, you know, more aggressive. And, and But I think KCC does provide that service for the students to make it a little bit easier for now, them. Now, are these paid for or do you, or is, it, is are they, I believe some of them are free. I believe some free companies. 99. Yeah, free 99. Yeah, free 99. Fortunately, IST has been very good to yeah, me and okay. they are paying me for this time. Okay. Um, so I really appreciate that. Uh, but I think it's important for everyone to have an internship. Um, that's the best way I learned is through trial and error. I'm not a like a, yep. open a book and, and read a book. Yep. And le like I like to be hands on, and that's how I learn best. Yeah, that's you learn by I trial and error, not by trial and error. At least to my belief. Yeah, yeah, no, and and the, the rules yeah. surrounding it are is if they're actually come in and are doing work that you would have had employees doing, then you must pay. Oh, so that so you've got to deal now that state yeah. of Hawaii labor laws or Something is that like federal that. labor laws? I wish laws. I knew about it because I, I, I don't you know I'm not the HR <coughs> piece of our business, but. Mm -hmm. um, the, w he works, so he, so he he gets paid. Okay, he you know? works, and so, so he gets paid. I think if they come in and they just like shadow and they don't actually do, do any anything. tasking <laughs> that other people would be doing or that you need done, then it's a little different. Like maybe if they do filing or something, it wouldn't matter. But um, if they're working, and we, um, you know, Ryan has Ryan has uh, gone through our uh, the training process for our CRM and all this kind of stuff. So okay. he'll he's getting. As if he just onboarded, you know, like a you like know, a regular. He's not working forty hours a week, but you know, when he's there, he's doing the same thing everyone that would do that we hire. Well, the good thing for you is you get to test whether or not you know this could be a potential employee. Well, yeah, down we'll, try the line. To, we'll try to hire him and see sure. after the internship, and <laughs> we say, hey, let's hire him. As long as they don't mess anything up, he knows our stuff. Something to crash the system. Well, we, we like you to mess stuff up. You will. No I can guarantee yeah. you, yeah, you will. You will. I'm dealing with some projects right now, and. 
<laughs> Some of the experts have really messed up. So, so did you take the summer? Are you in class now? Or, or uh, I'm not in the summer. summer yeah, so the work. classes that okay. I need to finish off at KCC were not available in the summertime. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping with KCC that actually next semester they open up a secondary internship class. Because after the internship, you actually have to take a class as well. Okay. So I'm hoping they set up the second one because the first one, they didn't set up enough room. So there's like 14 of us that don't have that class. And if I didn't graduate, that's, I'd have to wait a whole other semester another to take semester. that class. Now, how many students are in, these, in, the, in the program ballpark? <sighs> Gordo, I don't want to lie to you. I'm not really sure. 50, 60? <laughs> um, I w in, a, in a cyber security program, yeah. it's relatively new. I think there's probably less than 50. Okay, but that's still um, a number. That's still a significant yeah, it's number. Really fast. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot I more think, people I showing think interest. Dave was talking about 20, 20 they started, and then another 20. So I think there's 40, mm -hmm. and then maybe a, the new wave will start with the next semester or next spring right. or something like that. So it's growing. It's growing. It's, it's, yeah, and, and we talk about careers, and with people, the few people that watch this show, you know, these are the opportunities are sitting there presenting themselves to individuals yeah, I'm like yourself. I'm surprised more, more businesses aren't coming and recruiting you guys. So have they, did they bring in outside speakers as a part of the, the coursework there? Or? Um, they did. They have the, the, the KCC job fair, which is kind of, you okay. know, very right. vague. Uh, but they we, did. We, we, we go to that, too. Yeah, I think right. we, yeah, we probably have a booth. Well, they also have an advisory board. I that I KCC. sit on at KCC oh, that, awesome. that advises um, the the faculty on programs that should start that mm -hmm. should start up and and one of the ones that came up a number of years ago as was to set up a program dealing with cybersecurity okay. and those kinds of things and they obviously listen because they've uh, obviously have started up the, sure. they have the program now and they've started that were you there for they had a meeting where I guess a bunch of heads of companies came in and cybersecurity professionals to kind of assist people with with the internship. They wouldn't allow me to go because I didn't take the internship class yet. Okay, um, um, yet actually had to be in the class. Um, I did. Time, I did but. not. But when that one was going on, I was with another firm, and someone from that firm went. Um, okay. On on my stead from on my stead on for that one. Yeah. So I'm a one man show now. So <laughs> being in an intern an intern, I got to make sure I got to somehow figure out how to pay them. <laughs> 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 yes, and, and then trying to figure out how to put 50 years of IT stuff into their head, That's of true. which 90% is yeah. old school stuff. Well, it changes anything. like that, it's so you have to be consistently like on top of it. Yeah, so you said you also got some certificates along the way, so is that, is that a, um, working a, a towards mandatory it. or a P? A, no, it's how, a, how's that work out? Not necessarily mandatory, um, but in, in the IT field, which you know, you're well aware, um, having certificates is definitely a plus when you're looking for jobs, mm -hmm. um, when you're work if you're an independent contractor and you're working with companies as a consultant or, or whatnot, um, it helps because it shows that you have that experience because you mm -hmm. have to consistently keep up with that certificate, mm -hmm. um, like constantly be tested every few years to make sure you're up to date right. with what's going on. Right. So, so I think that's CompTIA important. Or ISACA or CompTIA or ISACA? CompTIA, they have uh, the Security Plus, Network Plus, they okay. have the, um, what's the cybersecurity one? The Cloud Plus and CCISPs and, and, and all, all, all the different ones. So this is something to make to, to, for the viewers to make note. So you can be going to school and you're getting the general generic education and yep. what's going on, but then the various technologies or infrastructures or whatever you want to call it or companies have their own certificate programs Absolutely. that are not necessarily taught at school right and those are and I they are just as important if not more important than what you're getting taught at school right and that's true you could honestly go online and teach yourself IT and cybersecurity and mm -hmm. learn to code at home and then just get these certificates as like a secondary thing or as a plus to what your own you know self-taught right. ways that's are awesome. so it's good for that's, it's good for those who And you guys have a lab there. I know Dave talked about how's it so that gives you and it's segregated from the KCC network, of course, so you can play with right. malware or whatever. Right. So well, we we sometimes use um, the actual lab they have there to kind of more of a hands on PC operating maintenance where we kind of take apart computers, put them back together, play with okay. the motherboards. Um, for the cybersecurity side, we actually go into a virtual, it's like a net lab. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, basically a virtual computer that's off of a network, and you can, you know, install malware, viruses, and kind of play with that mm. to the point where it won't affect anybody. You won't be, FBI won't be knocking at your door, so it's safe to mess around on. <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> with that, we got to take a pause. Okay. So we got to take a pay minute. Pay some bills. Got to pay some <laughs> bills. I got to go grab Angus. He's really irritated on something oh, today. Oh, is there a rant today? So he's got a rant. Anyway, so we'll grab Angus, and we'll be back here in about a minute. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Olelo54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. 
We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Hey everybody, welcome back to Abatsi Talk. Andrew, the security guy here. We got Ryan Borneman, IT intern from KCC. And of course, Angus is in the house. Today's security minute is a little different. I have a little gift for the tech czar today. This is a little bit of Viking schnapps. I happen to know he's got a little Viking in him. So I thought I'd take this moment just to present a little gift from Iceland since I've been traveling and not been on the show enough for you today, sir. Angus, good to see you, buddy. What is my gift? Yeah, we so cheapy. Well, I might share it with you. <laughs> Everybody's here. We've got, we've got schnapps. <laughs> you got more than a, we've got a Viking in him. You've got a lot of Viking in him. <laughs> Ryan, how you doing there, lad? I'm doing good. I'm good doing to good. see you in school. <laughs> Stay out of trouble. <laughs> We're <laughs> following the other guy's footsteps over there. I think it's going to crack open this bottle during this. We would crack it open for sure. <laughs> Get ready for it. Anyway, you know, we are talking about shopping carts and people not being lazy and whatever. Really irritating me. So I was on a wee trip. Went to Mexico. So I took this picture of this, this person on the airplane. you got to be kidding me, people. Are you guys actually getting on the airplane doing this kind of thing? I don't know, Rich, you got that photo up there? Is that available? Anyway, the person was sitting in the chair with their feet up on the back of the other chair. Oh. Ooh, if I had been sitting in the chair in front, I would have walked around and given a skite and a walk. Take your really shoes. Yeah, come on, people. Will you get a life? Some people don't fly much. They're driving me crazy. <laughs> I tell you. So you're right, and you're not going to do that, right? I don't do Many that. Many of millennials I are going to do this kind of stuff. Never. All right, never. you better. I'm, I'm watching you, lad. Anyway, that's my wee rant for the day. No tech, no nothing, just rant. Anyway, like I say at the end of the segment, let your wing game free, or you be a little hot. Nice. Good job, Angus. And seriously, you know, when you're flying out there, be courteous, man. I've been on so many planes this year. I think I already made diamond, like 150,000 air miles, but... Um, be courteous to the people in front of you. Don't be kicking their seat. You know, keep keep the uh, you know have road rage in the cars. We don't need road rage on an airplane. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome tell, back. You're telling me. I think air, air, airplane. Thank range. you very much. Yeah, some Loki, Loki, man. This will be. I've never had Loki, <laughs> so this will be a first. Very it's well. a pure and natural drink for real Vikings. That's it. Wow. I gotta wear my helmet next time. <laughs> I'll, wear my, I'll, I'll, I'll wear it. I'll be here with it next time. Thank you. But thank you so much. You're welcome. Angus and I will share that. Anyway, we're talking with, with Ryan, and we're talking about your internship, which I like to call apprentice apprenticeships, sure. um, because carpenters and plumbers and all that stuff used to do it. Why can't tech people do the same thing? So, um, again, so why did you pick this this career? What made this one jump out? Of it? Yeah, you how'd you that said be? How'd you that said be? business, and then all of a sudden you right. you kind of made this turn. Well. I, Really, it was, I've always had to think for computers. I always liked computers. I've always thought it was neat how they pretty much controlled so much our lives. Our envi <laughs> right, our li yeah. environment, our lives. So as moving forward, it just got more and more and more. I started to think, well, you know, 15, 20, 30 years from now, like, look how, how adapted we are. We are. How connected are, we are to everything. So stuff. 30, 40 years from now, it's just going to be, you know, three times that. So I figured if I want to get a degree and I want to be in the workforce, it's probably smartest to spend that time in school for right. the, the four years of actually getting something that's going to matter and probably matter forever. I don't ever see technology going away. Yeah, it's not definitely, definitely. Yeah, where's when you get the immersion? You know, it's hard yeah. to sit at home, right, and, and really teach yourself. But in class, you're right. sort of forced to sit there and, and actually absorb because it, you know, so many things pull you away. And you, it really takes time to learn and become become yeah. adept, you know, and, right. and understand just different, the power of a program, what you can do with it. You know, most well, of us have all this capacity and we use about one or two percent of it you know we learn how to do a couple of little macros or a couple of little things in PowerPoint. microsoft word yeah yeah, yeah, you know, yeah so yeah. you know not many people are really adept you know and 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 taking advantage and leveraging the technology in the ways that you can well there's those that get educated and those that learn and i think that's where the apprenticeship comes mm. into place because sure. you're learning right whereas as you're getting educated about it in the programs at school but that not till you get onto the road right do you learn things so what's been the biggest surprise about going out and you started your own company so you have some mm -hmm. familiarity to that but going out and working for a company like IST what was what's been some of the, the 
the surprises that have hit you that you weren't really expecting? Um, I mean, it's, it's so funny because I'm, I'm so off of the normal nine to five job. It's, I haven't worked that in eight years. You sound you know, like nine, a millennial. Nine years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ever awesome. since I've been doing this job, I, I, I make my own hours. I work whenever I want. I can go in. There's no boss calling me. And, and I got so comfortable with that. But now that I'm, I'm back into what people call a normal work day, yeah. um, it, it's, it's actually kind of nice. It's kind of, it's, it's different for me. It's going to be challenging. Um, you know, with, with the kind of companies they work with, it's so, it's a lot, it's a lot larger than what I thought business was. You mm -hmm. know, my, what I did on a daily basis as far as sales was concerned was a very small, minuscule thing. It was still fun. I enjoyed it. Um, but this is a whole new industry I can get into, something else I can learn, I can grow with. So that's kind of what I'm really excited about. But it's also going to be a challenge. But I feel like I have good leaders next to me. Yeah, well, that's good. That's when we had a guy on last week, Rich Lyman, who you know um, yeah, from, from Linnell. Linnell. I've sure. uh, been in the, in the physical security mm -hmm. business for a long time and seen how it's all been merging up right. and getting closer mm -hmm. and closer to things coming together. So, yeah, I, um, this industry, this cameras, access controls, electronic credentialing, security. electronic security, it's like I, I put that adjacent to when the web came out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how big it is. It's like cryptocurrency. Those three are all sitting there. It's all new fronts. Right. For the technology and for for industries so you yeah. get yourself into. Yeah, and Ryan's getting a he's getting to take a look at you know the health, like specifically like the healthcare vertical, and then we do DOD vertical, and then we've got a lot of other commercial verticals that we're active in. So he gets to kind of see the differences in there and the the sales cycles in those, and the the, the needs and the regulations are different in, across all those domains. So yeah. uh, he'll get a great glimpse over the summer of a lot of different aspects of business. So. So selling is one thing. Right. <laughs> Delivering is the other. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ever over gap. Never oversell. Always make sure you can follow yeah. through on the delivery. Yeah, that's that's always the challenge. Well, and then the teamwork, right? So we he's seen how we you know we have a lot. We have a, a a practice called traction, which is a program we use. It's an entrepreneurial operating system, right? For for managing the people and the different. Um, you know, aspects of personality that come into play. You know, you've got to transfer from what the customer wanted and told the salesperson down to the ops people, down to the installation team, you know, down to the, you know, it's got, it's got to be delivered right. as requested, you know. And so, you know, there's a, there's a process there. Right. Uh, and so he, he's going to get a glimpse of how, you know, our company does that. There's um, uh, a lot of ways to do that, but ours is, uh, you know, ours is borrowed from a, a, a known way of doing it, which we implemented a few years ago, which is pretty fun. And I think it works well because just by being there for the short time I have, it's it's kind of neat to see that, you know, there's multiple different departments, but everybody on a daily basis is, is getting up to qu for a quick meeting. Everyone works together on every project. Everyone knows what's going on. So, you know, in some companies you have kind of everyone's in their own section. They don't talk to their people in the different right. ways. This is just like one group that everybody works together to make sure things are getting done, that things are being executed, and you know, in the end, that we can deliver what we're selling. Well, you've got, you've got, you know, and, and this is not just unique to Andrew's company. There's, you know, a lot of companies. They've got, um, you've got your salespeople, you've got your uh, designers, you've mm -hmm. got the technicians, the engineering technicians group, you've got engineering group. group, and they've all got to be, all got to coordinate their efforts with whatever's going on. And I'm dealing right now. I got all of those going on, and then I got to deal with the architectural firm, mm -hmm. and I got to deal with and the, there's, there's always the, a financial. I, I got to I got to deal with the construction guys, and then I got to deal with the, the with their engineers. That's why I got to look. And everybody, I'm gonna, <laughs> this is going to go down so damn well. So that's why you got all this kind of stuff going on. Yeah. So um, my advice to you, as a you know potential, if you get into the sales side, make sure you understand the the back end side, right? Because. You could end up selling something and give your whole team nothing but heartburn all the sure. way down the line. Sure. So yeah. that's it's not something that's there. So, um, what advice would you give to you know for young adults like yourself getting into this field or anything? I mean, you're entrepreneur, you start your own yeah. business, but kind of cool. Um, but what kind of advice would you be giving them now that you know you've you've got to experience some of this? Uh, I would say definitely you know a lot of people are confused in college of where they want to go, what they want to do with mm -hmm. their lives. It's very tough to know that at a young age. Yeah. Um, I struggled with it when I was in my early 20s. It's something I didn't really know, and I kind of jumped around from business to tech. I was, you know, wanted to do communications to get done with it and be done. Um, I, I think you should kind of look into it. You know, look into cybersecurity as, as I did. Read in the articles. See how it's affecting our everyday world. I mean, mm -hmm. big companies like Google and Facebook, they're being hacked. Yeah. If they're hackable, we're all hackable. We see what's happening across Europe yesterday. I mean, all today, across Europe. Every today. single day. Every single day. So that, that encouraged me to say, hey, you know what? If I'm going to be in an industry and if I'm going to spend this time in school, and you know, a lot of people spend a lot of money for these programs, yep. um, let's make sure it's worth something that's going to you know, pay for it down the road. Yeah. And I'll have a you know, good career and 
um, what's that, job security, I guess you could say. Yeah, well, you, have a career, well, you can create your own job. And that's the other yeah. opportunity that sits mm. there is that you can, you can have the opportunity to create your own business. Yep. You can create your own job. You can create your own career. Yep. I mean, back in my day, and look, 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 there's multiple generations just sitting here. Look, you're working with multiple generations. But back in my day, the thought of you working for more than one company was pretty unusual. Right. Once you got your first job, that was it. Right. You never moved on. Yeah. And how many, how many times have I moved on, which is not, not the norm for my age, but you guys, if you, if you bring a lunch bag to work two days in a row, you're a permanent employee. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's just like, it's like, oh, uh, it's been nice here, but I got an offer for $80,000 down the street, and I've only been here a week. Sure. <laughs> and what a lot of guys do, I've, I've been hearing, is they, they'll take jobs that, you know, whether it's a coding job or, or within a company, and then on their spare time on the weekends, they'll code freelance for yep. companies overseas or just write software sure. here and there, just make extra money. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a nice field to be in IT and cybersecurity because it, it literally controls everything. Yeah. So, so as we're kind of winding down, believe it or not, we've burned through this thing already. So, so Ryan, you've you, you, been great having you as a guest on this show because you've got some energy Appreciate and I like, I like where you're heading. I think a lot of young people out there, watch this guy and uh, pay attention <laughs> to what he's saying. <laughs> you, can learn, you can learn a lot. You won't <laughs> listen to me, that's for sure. Any, <laughs> my great grandfather in the house. Anyway, no um, guest does not go unrewarded. You get number 124 in the series Fantastic. of these awesome solo cups. Awesome. So um, I've been seeing a few of them showing up on eBay for over $100. None of them <laughs> sold, but they're up there. <laughs> haven't sold any of them, but they're all up there. Anyway, so I just want to shout out to a few of my friends. Bruce, first name Bruce. Hang in there, buddy. You'll be, you'll be well fast. Hamish, you're doing well. Looking forward to seeing you in about a month. And as we say at the end of every show, one, two, three, how, how you, you doing? doing?